this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Ocarina of Time! Uh, one thing I think I neglected to mention last time was whenever you do a jump attack like that, you'll deal double damage of whatever weapon you have equipped. However, in the 3DS version of the game, with Deku Sticks that normally deal two damage, if you do a jump attack with them, you'll, I believe you'll only do two damage still. I think they were nerfed to not get that dam double damage multiplier there because, well, you deal four damage with them, which is pretty obscene at this point in the game. And there's also another attack method that you can use called a crouch stab. You press the R button or hold out your shield there, press the B button to stab something really quick like that. And in the original version of the game, it was bugged to deal damage equal to whatever the last attack you made was. But in this version of the game, they fixed it so it deals normal damage. So I can't take advantage of either of those two things coming up here. So, well, I have alternatives. But in order to move on here, you gotta make the camera move up to the ceiling there to find the queen. For boss time against Goma. Okay, so you want to lock onto her eye, shoot her with the fairy slingshot, and then just wail on her eye over and over and over again like this. And eventually she will run away. She's going to climb up to the ceiling there. And let's see. Let's get our fairy slingshot out. Wait for her eye to turn red again. Aha! Gotcha. And then just slash her a bunch more. Boom, she's dead. Hooray! Now, if you just let her sit up there, if you can actually sit on a ceiling, that is, uh, she will eventually start spitting out those eggs at you that we saw earlier. But for defeating her, we get a heart container. Hooray! But yeah, she'll spit out those eggs at you like we saw in that one room last time. But if you just knock her down, you can just keep on wailing on her and defeat her pretty quickly. There is a way that you can still kill her in one cycle before she climbs up to the ceiling there. And I will show that in the Master Quest playthrough. Since the bosses are basically identical between the Normal Quest and the Master Quest, other than like all enemies, including bosses, dealing double damage to Link there, but since they are the same, I figured I'd demonstrate the slower, easier method in the first quest playthrough, and then demonstrate more advanced strategies in the master quest playthrough against those bosses. No. But thou must! Okay, never mind then. What do you mean your time is short? Oh, okay. So that's how you got that curse, huh? Have I seen that guy before? Kind of hard to tell with all the fire around here. I'm not really sure what the point of that is, but okay. Oh, is that like the Dark World or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, we've had them in almost every Zelda game up to this point. Maybe we should hide these triangles of unlimited power somewhere better. I don't know, bad guys keep on finding them over and over and over again in these games. But, alright. Well, they don't really look golden to me. Well, okay, she kind of does, I guess. But yeah, now in this game, yeah, we're actually starting to get some lore behind the Triforces and everything like that. I mean, pretty much before this game, the plot was either in the instruction manual for the most part, or there was relatively little plot behind it. It was just, hey, we got these magical triangles of unlimited power. Uh, bad guy got them, but you have to stop him anyway. But, yeah, now we're getting a little more in-depth with it. Kind of reminds me of Fantasy Star 4 a little bit. 
like how this is kind of tying the all the tri forces and stuff together here and elaborating more on what's really going on well we haven't been doing a good job of that have we Well, thanks for the world! That sounds like a really bad idea! Maybe they should have, like, left us with a security system or something for these things? But, okay, they're there now. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Oh, so that's how you got the curse, huh? Oh, okay. But, but we defeated Goman there. Oh. Nice. So what, were you just stringing me along all this time, or what? Oh, I wasn't. <laughs> I like how Link's just kind of sitting there, like, uh-huh, yep, yeah, 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 tell me another one. I have no idea what you're talking about, though, I'm six years old! How am I supposed to know what any of this means? Well, how do we get there? Aren't I gonna die if I leave the forest? That doesn't exactly sound like the best plan. Maybe it was just a bluff or something, and we won't really die if we leave. Does this stone do anything, or is it a MacGuffin? Spoiler alert! It is! A nine! A shiny nine. So yeah, these are the... Well, this is the first MacGuffin in the game that we get... Well, thanks for the stone. Yeah, this is something that's new to the 3DS version of the game. I'll show that off real quick. I'm not going to show everything with it, but, well, you'll see. I have little money left. Or time. Well, time is money, so... I like how he just dies there with his mouth wide open like that. Like, ooh! <laughs> like, he, he's got a permanent jaw drop on his face now. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> Sorry. H.C. Uh, uh, Bailey ruining cutscenes for over ten years now. Oh, hey! What did you just do? What did you just do? Am I going to have to rub your nose in that? Well, dude, you were the one who let that other guy come in here and cast the death curse on him. Where were you when that was happening? Did no one, like, notice him drop on by? I mean, you'd think he'd be a pretty hard guy to miss. But, okay. Hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, I sandbagged him. Well, let's see if Saria is home here. Maybe we can talk to her. Uh, oh, okay, she's not here then. Never mind. But all right, well, let's... Uh, oh, yeah, she was out in front of our house before. Oh, but she's gone now. Hmm. Well, anyway, this was the Shaka Stone that the Deku Tree was talking about, and, well, now that we've gone through the dungeon, yeah, we can uh, check things out here. So, yeah, let's see what we got. I'm not going to show every one of these things, but, yeah, whenever you do something or hear about something you're about to do, yeah, the Shika Stone 
will have these little visions and cutscenes for you. I guess just to help you out a little bit there. But yeah, there's way too many of them for me to show off everything there. So we're just gonna move on then. I think most of the Kokiri just say the same things. Oh, uh, to the castle? I, I'm not really sure where it is. But I guess... Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll just go take a look around. Okay, how's it going? Oh, yeah, that would be a bummer. Well, the Deku Tree told me to. Maybe he just wants me to die and take Navi with me. But, alright. Yeah, now that you've beaten the dungeon, you can leave here. Oh, hey! There you are! I was wondering where you went. Oh, you did? Oh. I, I, I guess I am, huh? Great, I'm not even one hour into the game and I've already been friend-zoned. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm not really sure how to play it. Or any songs, for that matter, but okay. <laughs> I like how Link's just looking at it like, Ooh, sparkly. <laughs> Like, he's really impressed with it and has no idea what it does. <laughs> but, yeah, in this version of the game, since it's on the 3DS, we just press the normal buttons to play songs on it. In the original version of the game, you had all these C buttons that you would press to do the songs. But, yeah, not in this version of the game. And, fortunately, I think that makes it easier to play the songs but uh well thanks for the ocarina <laughs> i like how link was just kind of backpedaling there like he was scared of her or something and just runs away like ah, girls have cooties i'm out of here or something <laughs> But all right, now we can get to Hyrule Field, and no, we don't die. So, yeah, let's take a look around here. Got grass, more grass, and even more grass around here. Uh, yeah, there's really not a whole lot around here. Oh, hey! Did you escape from the last game in the series? Please don't do the thing. Oh, okay. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, that'll make it easier. Okay, well, yeah, that's where the Deku Tree told me to go, then. But yeah, we got an overworld map there on the bottom screen now. So that'll take you from area to area there. Well, <laughs> yeah, you're trying to trick me there, game, by putting the negative option first as the... Default there. <laughs> yeah, they did that in the original game, too. Much to my chagrin. But alright, let's head to Hyrule Castle. And let's see. Yeah, it's on the far north side of Hyrule Field, about in the middle there, so you can just follow this path to get there. But yeah, this was a thing with, like, 3D games in the late 90s where they always had to have, like, one massive wide-open area just to show off all the tech, even though there's not really a whole lot going on around here. But it was new. This was high-tech stuff back then. And we liked it. And let's see. Yeah, as you can see, it's kind of... Well, turning to dusk and nighttime here. Yeah, Ocarina of Time has a day-night system. And when it turns nighttime, they raise the drawbridge, and I didn't make it in time. So, I guess we gotta... Whoa! Yeah, we gotta wait until daytime now. What do we got here? Stall Child. Yeah, whenever it's nighttime on Hyrule Field, yeah, these guys will just spawn... 
and let's see. Yeah, and I think these guys will just spawn over and over and over again around here endlessly. So, yeah, I'm just gonna hang out for a little while until it turns daytime again so I can get into the castle. But yeah, you could actually get to the castle on the first trip there if you, like, did all those rolling. Or, yeah, if you just rolled over and over and over again to get here. Or you could have moonwalked all the way over here. That would get you here before the drawbridge was raised. But I just wanted to show off the day-night system that we got here. And I don't feel like killing these guys over and over and over again. But yeah, in order to advance the plot, I need it to be daytime to show off some things in Hyrule Castle there. But then I also need it to become nighttime again. So that's why I saved the game where I did there. So that way I can just blast my way here to show that off eventually. Let's see, if you climb up this uh, drawbridge chain there, I am not very confident in my ability to walk in a straight line, as you can see. Okay, if you get all the way to the top here, okay, right about there, and then you do, er, I don't think I'm quite centered, but you, if you do a backflip here, yeah, you can get a red rupee there. There's actually three of them up there. Like, if you stood on the chain there and wait for nighttime to happen and you could walk across the edge of the drawbridge there, you could get all three of the red rupees that are around there. But we have a maximum of 99 rupees at this point in the game. We'll eventually be able to expand that, but... Yeah, so there's really not a whole p much of a point of hoarding rupees at this point. But yeah, we got a huge market area here with a lot of NPCs. We got some mini games, some shops, and a whole bunch of other things around here. Well, hopefully some of the people around here know something useful. But where can we find the princess around here anyway? Find out next time and let's play Ocarina of Time. This is H.E. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!